What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero, and I'm back with another retro Yu-Gi-Oh format video. And in this video, I'm going to be covering a format that I've been talking about for quite some time, which is Chaser Format. Now, if you aren't familiar, Chaser Format is what I'm calling the format that happens right after Critter, where Tournament Pack 1 is released, which introduces some new cards, and one card in particular that it's very influential. But before we dive into all that, if you like these sort of retro Yu-Gi-Oh videos, then please consider subscribing to my channel. We reached my goal of 300 subscribers in the month of December, which is really exciting. So it would be really cool if we could get 350 by the end of January, or even 400. My goal for 2023 is 1,000, so if you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, as always, please give it a like. But with that out of the way, let's dive in to Chaser Format. So Chaser Format is basically just Critter Format. There are some very influential cards that are released, which you see on screen here. But overall, it's not going to change things too much. Certain decks become slightly less viable. There is a certain deck that becomes a lot more viable, which is very exciting. The big difference is that there is a new big beater in town, which is Mechanical Chaser. Mechanical Chaser is a level 4 monster with 1850 attack, which is bigger than the other standard beaters in the format, like Lodge In and Seven Colored Fish. Sure, things like Dark Elf and Jirai Gumo still outclass Mechanical Chaser, but those have steep costs associated with it, so not every deck wants to play those. This makes Mechanical Chaser the best just vanilla beater in the format. And I think that this doesn't change things too much, it mainly just changes what beater people are playing. But in decks that would play more than just the three standard Lodgin, it can change things quite a bit, as you can't really play six 1800 beaters anymore. You kind of have to just play the three 1850 beaters, and then potentially some bigger beaters like Jiraiyuma or Dark Elf. It also has some more subtle impacts on the format in ways that I think make it kind of less nuanced and complex. In Critter format, there's a really neat move you could play where if you draw Mooka turn one, then you could just set Mooka Mooka, and it would have 1800 defense, as you'd have five cards in hand. And if your opponent attacked into it with like a Lodge in or a seven colored fish on their turn, then you would be able to essentially dodge trap hole and have a monster that could beat over your opponent's beater next turn. In chaser format, that doesn't really exist, as mechanical chaser does have over 1800 attack and thus can get over the defense position Mooka Mooka in this scenario. So I think that honestly, if you're looking for a more complex format that feels like Critter, you should honestly just play Critter as Mechanical Chaser just kind of decreases the overall complexity of the game. But I will say that it also does introduce some major improvements to some more jank strategies. But before we dive into that, I just want to make sure everyone's on the same page, so let's just cover the limited list for this format. So, the limited list for Chaser format is the same limited list as Critter, which many of you probably already know, but that does mean that the most powerful cards in this format, like the Power 5 Limited Spells, are pretty much the same as in Critter. I'm not going to spend too much time discussing this. If you want to see my more in-depth thoughts on this limited list, then you can check out my Critter Guide, as my thoughts really haven't changed all too much. But I just wanted to be clear what the actual limited list for this format was, in case anyone was confused about what exactly this format is. It's the format that has TP1 and before it for the card pool, and the format that has the Critter limited list for its limited list. But now that we've gotten that basic detail out of the way, let's dive in to what really makes this format fun and potentially worth playing, and that is the Jank. Now, the most influential card that Tournament Pack 1 released was definitely Mechanical Chaser. That changed the game in many, many ways and affected pretty much every deck in the format. However, the most interesting change that Chaser Format makes is the introduction of the Fusion Substitute Monsters. Now, these are monsters that can basically be used as a substitute for any one Fusion Material when you're performing a Fusion Summon, as long as the other material is correct. So, for instance, if you wanted to Fusion Summon something like Twin Ended Thunder Dragon, but you only had one Thunder Dragon in hand, you could still perform the Fusion Summon if you had a Goddess with a Third Eye, for example or Beast King of the Swamps, or Versag of the Destroyer. Now, the stats on these things are very, very close, but the one that you'd mainly be playing would be Goddess with the Third Eye, as it does have the most attack at 1200, 
I guess if you wanted to max out on defense, you could play Beast King of the Swamps instead. But 1100 defense versus 1000 defense isn't really a big difference. And realistically, you're just going to be using these as fuel for your fusion summons. But you might wonder what this actually changes as... The only fusion monster really going into in critter format was Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. Are there any actual good ones now that these fusion substitute monsters exist? Well, the answer is surprisingly yes, which is actually really, really neat. There are a bunch of fusion monsters in critter format that had one really good fusion material and one really bad one. A prime example is Labyrinth Tank, made up of Gigatech Wolf and Cannon Soldier. Now. I'm sure many of you have never even heard of Gigatech Wolf, as it's a normal monster with pretty bad stats, but if you've been following my coverage of Critter Format, then you're probably intimately familiar with Cannon Soldier, which is one of the big staple cards in that format. Now, you could have played a fusion deck using Labyrinth Tank in the last format, maybe including things like Last Will, so that way you'd only need like one copy of Gigatech Wolf, and you could easily fetch it out when you want to go for the fusion summons. But honestly, this is kind of a bad deck, and I think the general fusion deck in Critter would just play like Twin Ed Thunder Dragon instead, as its fusion materials basically find themselves, as Thunder Dragon just grabs two Thunder Dragons to hand automatically, which makes it a lot less commitment. And it also has very good attack at 2800. However, in a fusion substitute deck, you're probably already going to be playing Cannon Soldier, so you might as well play the Labyrinth Tanks as well, and you could reasonably go into that if you have a Goddess of the Third Eye and Cannon Soldier in hand, you know, Polymerization makes that into a Labyrinth Tank. By a similar token, a card like Musician King, which would see no play in Critter Format as it's pretty bad, could potentially see play in this sort of deck. It's made with Witch of the Black Forest and Lady of Faith, and Witch of the Black Forest is a staple in pretty much every deck in Critter, and thus by extension, every deck in Chaser. So there are some really neat applications that you can do here. Fusion summoning out Musician King using a Witch and a Fusion Substitute monster, cutting out the useless normal monster that is Lady of Faith. Those are the main fusion monsters that you'll likely be going into, but there are others as well that you could reasonably make work. Black Skull Dragon uses Summon Skull and Red Eyes Black Dragon. And while Red Eyes Black Dragon is very, very bad, a two tribute monster with bad stats, that can't actually be searched. Summon Skull can actually be searched out from deck with Witch of the Black Forest, and could be used in like a soul exchange strategy, or just in combination with Change of Heart. So you could reasonably go into the Black Skull Dragon in this sort of deck. If you want to play a bit more clown controly, the Curry Box is made up of Crass Clown and Dream Clown, the two staple monsters of clown control. Now, realistically, Dream Clown is pretty bad in the format. I think Crass Clown is marginally better, so you'd probably be playing this instead of both. But it's interesting that now you have an option to go into off of the fusion substitutes and a Crass Clown. Maybe you bounce something to hand with Crass Clown and then go into Procurry Box to get a lot of damage on board. There's some very, very interesting applications here. The last fusion monster I want to mention is Thousand Dragon, which uses Time Wizard and Baby Dragon, neither of which are all too great. But Time Wizard is a very neat card that can be a board clear if you get lucky with the coin toss. So you could potentially include it as a one of in the deck, potentially go into Thousand Dragon, or just provide you with an awesome swingy push at the last minute if you need it. Those are likely the only fusion monsters that you'll be going into, but just having the option to build the deck in many different ways and go into all these really cool monsters is really awesome. And so I'm really glad that these fusion substitutes are now introduced, as I think it's a really cool rogue deck. So. I think that if you play this format, it's definitely one of the best things to experiment with, and it's honestly the main reason why I'm actually excited to dive into this format. I, th I think that this deck is really, really cool. Torn Pack 1 did also introduce some other tools for more jank decks, but they're a lot less impressive. In previous formats, there would have been equip spells like Invigoration and Sword of Dark Destruction, which would boost certain attributes of monsters, Earth and Dark respectively. And Torment Pack 1 introduces the other suite of attribute boosters, basically. Elf's Light for Light, Steel Shell for Water, Burning Spear for Fire, and Gust Fan for Wind. However, these are all basically outclassed by the other equip spells in Metal Raiders, mainly Stim Pack, which increases by 700 attack. It does decrease the monster's attack by 200 during each of your standby phases, but realistically this won't matter, as by the time this actually does make a difference, your monster will already have done a lot of work. 
And also, Stimpak can be equipped to any monster in your deck, making it a lot more flexible than any of the attributal equipped cards. So, I think that these cards are basically outclassed by many of the equipped spells in Metal Raiders, and so their introduction to the game comes a bit too late. But they are here if you do want to experiment with them. Lastly, one of the worst decks available right now does receive a little bit of support, and that's Back Row Control, with the introduction of Patrol Robo. This is a very weak monster with only 1100 attack, that during your standby phase lets you look at one face down card that your opponent has set. This is not very good, it's very hard to keep around, and even if you do keep it around, it doesn't really gain you that much. I guess it does enable you to sort of know how to play around your opponent's strategy a bit better. But the introduction of Heavy Storm into last format kind of made back row control obsolete. And so I don't really think that this is a good card right now. It is something that if you do want to make a back row control deck though, you can experiment with. In addition to these cards that can help out older decks, Tournament Pack 1 also introduced some very unique cards in their own right that don't really fit into a given strategy, but are unique enough that I do want to talk about them. I've titled this section of the video, Why? Because that is the question that springs to mind whenever you read some of these cards. First up, we've got Cockroach Knight, which is a monster that when it's sent to the graveyard is returned to the top of the deck. Now, you might initially view this as a great counter to Stall Mill, which has the goal of decking you out. If you've got Cockroach Knight, this goal becomes a lot harder to achieve. However, there already is a card that does this that was introduced in Metal Raiders called Sword of Deep Seated which is just a much better card than Cockroach Knight in general. I guess Cockroach Knight is searchable off of Witch or Sangan, so if you really need it early on in the game, you can get it. But Sword of Deep Seated actually does something without costing your normal summoner set, and it boosts a monster's attack by 500, which is not actually that bad. So if you are planning on having some anti mill side deck technology in your deck, I would honestly go with Sword of Deep Seated instead of Cockroach Knight, as this can get added benefit on top of being an anti-mill tech. There really is no reason why you would ever want to play Wodan Resident of the Forest. This is a very, very weak monster with only 900 attack that gains 100 attack points for every plant-type monster that is faced up on the field. Now, this has multiple, multiple problems. The first of which being that at its maximum, so if you and your opponent are maxed out on plant monsters, and they're all face up. Wodan will have 1800 attack. Now that is weaker than a mechanical chaser, and it's very, very conditional on what your opponent has. So this card can't even get up to major offensive heights. In addition, not relying on your opponent to have plant monsters, the maximum you can get this card up to is 1300, which is just really, really weak. Like, there's no reason why you'd want to play a monster with 1300 attack in this format, unless it had a very good effect. But potentially the most damning thing for this card is that there just aren't any good plant monsters in this format. Up to this point, there have only been 7 plant monsters released. Dark World Thorns, Firegrass, Green Phantom King, Maneater, Rainbow Flower, Trent, and Bean Soldier. Of these, pretty much all of them are just weak normal monsters. And the one that is an effect monster, Rainbow Flower, is already outclassed by another monster, Jinto number 7, which shares the same effect to attack your opponent's life points directly, but more attack. Realistically, you would never want to build a deck around any of these cards, even though I guess with the Fusion Substitute deck in the format, you could potentially make a deck using Firegrass or Dark World Thorns to go into Dark Fire Dragon or Flower Wolf, respectively. But these are incredibly weak fusion monsters, and don't really justify the inclusion of a weak normal monster as well, especially if those weak normal monsters are meant to justify the inclusion of Wodan, the Resident of the Forest, which is just an absolutely terrible, terrible card. So I think this is honestly one of the worst effect monsters released up to this point in the game. It is very fun to talk about and rag on though. Moving on to the spells, we've got Blue Medicine and Rime, both of which share very similar flaws. Blue Medicine is a spell that increases your life points by 400, and Rime is a spell that decreases your opponent's life points by 300. Now, the main issue with these cards is that they're just outclassed by other better cards. For instance, in terms of life point game, Diane Keto, the Cure Master, increases your life points by 1,000 life points, which is much better than Blue Medicine. Ignoring the fact that life point game cards are just not that good right now, this is the worst of all of them, so there's no real reason to play it. 
Raime is very similar in that the only damage dealing spell card that it outclasses is Sparks. This card is even outclassed by Hinotama. While damage dealing spells can find a place in certain burn decks, you know, there are just too many better ones to include before you'd ever get to Raime. So there's really no reason to play this card at all. And lastly, for the soul trap here, we have White Hole, which is a very, very interesting trap. It's basically a counter trap specifically for Dark Hole, except it's not actually a counter trap. It reads that when your opponent activates Dark Hole, monsters you control cannot be destroyed by that Dark Hole effect, which is very interesting as you can basically turn Dark Hole into a pure minus for your opponent if they've got monsters on field that would also die to it. However, this has multiple flaws. One, Dark Hole is a limited spell, and so, you know, it's not really worth having a trap card specifically there to counter it in your deck, as if you don't draw it and your opponent uses Dark Hole, then it's basically worthless. And if you do draw it, but your opponent doesn't use Dark Hole, then it's also worthless. So it's just very, very rare that the situation would come up where you'd actually be able to use this card whatsoever. And on top of that, you know, your opponent's probably activating Dark Hole at a point where they don't really care about losing their monsters. Sure, it's bad if you get to keep yours, but like, it's not really as big a negative for your opponent as you may think. In addition, this card is outclassed by a ton of counter traps. Like, I also think Magic Jammer would be a much better inclusion in a deck than White Hole if you are worried about Dark Hole. Yes, Magic Jammer does have a cost associated with it, but it's much better than White Hole, which is way too situational. And that's going to do it for the Chaser Format Guide here. Tournament Pack 1 did introduce some very important new cards to the format, especially Mechanical Chaser, but I think overall it isn't as ground-shaking as some of the previous format changes were. You know, it's not the same as a Metal Raiders being introduced into the game, or a starter deck Yugi or Kaiba. The changes it makes are very subtle and potentially detrimental, even though it does introduce a very, very cool new rogue strategy. So I think that the choice about whether you want to play this or Critter really just comes down to what you value in the format and how much you want to play that Fusion Substitute Rogue deck. And I know for me, I really do want to play that Fusion Substitute Rogue deck, so I'm very excited to dive into it in the coming videos. But what do you all think? Do you think that this format is actually a lot more different from Critter than I've given it credit for? Or do you think that the Fusion deck is completely irrelevant and Mechanical Chaser's attack difference is just not that impactful on the format as a whole? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. And until next time, I've been Ben from YGO Frame Zero and I'm signing off.